we'll just put this on as our background uh, uh, video A. Yeah, hold on, give me one second. I'm just going to quickly pop to the loo and then you guys can uh, start asking me questions. Okay, okay, so uh, let's go. What kind of questions do you guys want to ask? <clears throat> Question one, how strong is Sefi Black Tekken? Question two, how handsome is Sefi Black? Question three, should that be? Okay, uh, okay, uh, so I'll answer your uh, uh, first question, how strong is Sefi Black? On a continuum, let's say one being very weak, like beginner, and ten being Atif Bhatt and uh, Asa Nash. I think uh, Sefi Black sits around about like 8.5 uh, or maybe 8.5 or maybe even a 9, but I think it's 8.5. And uh, how handsome is Sefi Black? That's 10 out of 10. A uh, question should be, question should be, oh, People will turn gay for Sefi Black, no doubt. And he, his personality is very, very, very pleasant to be around. Always smiling, always very helpful. And, uh, you know, and, and just a very, very nice person. Very strong, attacking, and very handsome. How? How can you get a human being like that? You tell me, because I don't know. Uh, hello, Pomaham. You back. Did you meet Dracula? Dracula. I didn't meet Dracula. But I've been to uh, a couple of uh, 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 castles and mansions that re resembles uh, Lady D. But unfortunately, uh, I couldn't save the top G. <laughs> joking, joking. Please don't cancel me. I hate top G. All right. <coughs> Could he beat you not using Miguel? Uh, he only played Miguel against me. Uh, so... His Miguel is very, very strong. I learned a lot from uh, playing against him to be more uh, careful. Um, one of the things I learned from playing against these uh, top level players is that uh, um, they, they can sense when you want to go up and press a button. So whenever you go up and press a button, they will counter you with something, either a magic fool or uh, let's say Yagami's case. He would counter you with a back four. I, I believe it's back four. Katarina's one. You knew that little kick. Uh, uh, whereas uh, there, there, there are two full ups. Either the headbutt or the uh, three plus four. The three plus four is safe. Oh no, the headbutt is safe. But the three plus four is mid. It's a mid. But what happened is that he, uh, when he sensed that you're going to come up and, and, uh, uh, and um, uh, what do you call it? Approach with a button. He will counter you with uh, a back four. However, you go up and you dash a block, you can you can shoulder it at minus 13. So it's that kind of a constant, constant mind game that the high level players are playing against people who are maybe uh, one level, level below or one or two level below, below them. So you have to actually, first step is that don't go up and get countered. If you don't go up and get countered, then next level up. Um, I hope that makes sense. Hello, Cole Willis. What was the biggest difference you found in playing international players generally compared to OCE players? Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things about New Zealand players is that New Zealand players um, 
not all of them, but most of New Zealand players very quick to go button. They button, 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 button. Every solution is a button. And the only reason why we get hit is because our defense is not very good. If you play against these international top players, you button, only two outcomes. You get blocked, you die. Or they counter you with something before you even can button. So uh, this is the biggest difference between high-level international players and uh, your average New Zealand players. Um, if you want to be high-level international players, please don't button. Uh, you know, you, you will not beat them with a button. Unless you can play like a thief. So, but then maybe that's a different story. Um, but usually speaking, um, go up a button is not a good idea. All right, next one. Um, oh, it's minus 16. What do I know, right? Because being compounded with, uh, so I just call it minus 13. What was the competitive mindset prior to IESF? Uh, how was that mindset changed? Okay, uh, this is a very good question. So prior to uh, my uh, IESF uh, tri uh, trip, I was actually quite negative about it. Why? Because uh, I didn't have any passion for Tekken um, for so long. Uh, so I, I didn't play much and also I didn't care, right? And I, I actually, I was so focused on my job. I felt like Tekken was so boring. I didn't even want to go. I thought it was going to be a annoying trip. But then once I got there, I started playing and I realized that, wow, the international level is so high. It's so interesting. The first week I was very devastated because uh, I literally like lost to 99% of the, well, maybe not 99, but let's say 90% of the players I've uh, played against. Like I said, I couldn't even get one game of uh, Pecos when I first played him. Um, and that's the first week. But then somehow it rekindled my, especially by playing against Yagami every day and Sefi Black and some of the others, like the Italian player called Evo. Uh, I even invited uh, Moyo and uh, uh, Pecos and uh, Atif, right? And just playing against a variety of top level players and consistently playing against Yagami every day, like every morning, nighttime, it, it really rekindled uh, uh, my passion for Tekken. And uh, I feel like I was improving. Um, and that's why I did pretty well when I uh, asked Pecos to play me again uh, on the last day. So uh, I challenged him to a first of five and I defeated him uh, five to four. So uh, I, I won, right? I mean, first week, I couldn't even touch Pecos. It was zero five to him. And uh, um, second week, we had practice, practice. I learned a lot of stuff. I defeated him five four. It's very, very close. Final, final round. But it was improvement within two weeks, right? So that really rekindled my uh, passion and confidence in Tekken. But initially I wasn't confident. Yes, it was close, but how intense was it? <laughs> it was pretty intense. Uh, another thing against these uh, uh, high level players, do not whiff. If you whiff, you're, you're fucked, all right? And also there's another thing, they're so experienced and they're so very good that Whenever you want to close a game, right? So, uh, so first week when I play against a lot of uh, players like Yagami, Sefi Black, uh, Ativ, and like, even when you get very close, like round wise, it was actually not too bad. It was actually close. Most of the time it was like two, two round, right? But then the final round, they would always know what you want to do. Either you want an approach or you're, 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 um, you want to press a button or you want to do some, you want to cash in. It's so obvious to them that you want to do these things because you're so desperate. So then I've reminded myself and I said to myself, look at Ni. Ni is never desperate. He would rather die with dignity by not pressing a button and die rather than trying something really obvious and getting countered or getting blocked. So, so I'd rather die with not pressing a button now uh, as opposed to dying with something big, 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 big. And people are like, oh yeah, he's going to do something big and get blocked or get parried or get counted. Um, I don't know if this is good or bad. I mean, it, it really depends. It, it depends on who you're up against, uh, all different situation, of course. But uh, to me, this is like a training. I have to keep myself calm at all times. Trust me, people like Yagami, he is calm at all fucking times. There's, you can't break him. All right, you can't break him. 
That's the key thing I have to remind myself all the time. I would rather lose. So who cares? I take it as a learning experience. Even against, um, I think another thing about New Zealand Tekken is that maybe um, you think, oh, this person might not be very good. Uh, not, not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm better than this person. And you really want to beat this person. But why don't you take it in a different mindset? It doesn't matter, right? It's always a learning, um, learning uh, um, experience. It doesn't matter if this person is general skills is better than you or neutral is better than you. If you lose, you lose. Take it as a learning uh, opportunity. Um, it, that's something I learned from my... Initially, I was devastated. And by the end, I was like, yeah, every game is a learning opportunity. Doesn't matter whether I win or lose. All right, so next one. Uh, <clears throat> I think countdown might be full of uh where were any instances where you were surprised by how other players approach tech and the competition in general? Uh, okay, I'm going to answer this one. This is a very good question. So uh, my surprise, uh, everything was surprising initially because, for example, like how they are so good at um, like fuzzy block, uh, like every low was a uh, risk. Trust me, but you do it, it like you think, oh, I've never used this low before. Now I'm going to at this time, I'm going to use this low. Well, I'll tell you what, people like Sefi Black and Yagami, they'll just block it or they parry it. They don't hop kick it. They don't do random and they just block it and they all they parry it. You did. And they always optimize their combos. It, it, like you think there's all fixes? Well, I'll tell you what, maybe we drop 80% of the time. They drop 10% of the time, even if it's all fixes. All right, that's how familiar they are with their characters. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you, you can't get parried, you, can't, you get parried, you die. You get blocked, you die. So don't ever, against them, don't ever think you're safe. Even if they have like one health left, 1%, you're never safe. All right, so uh, this is something I learned. And uh, the way they, they um, approach the game is that they, they are very, very calm and collected. And they are always uh, uh, looking for that opening. And they see if you hesitate, they come up and harass you and being aggressive. They see that you're trying to uh, be aggressive, they wait for you to make a mistake. And you whiff, you die. You get blocked, you die. A lot of players to me look so calm. It looks like as though they don't even care at all. That's correct. Uh, okay, there's another mindset. Uh, uh, thank you, Axel. There's another mindset. I, I want to share with you guys. I learned from the Denmark player. He's a very strong Oscar player. I think his mindset is really, really good. He says, um, okay, if you get mixed up, people, what happened? People get very annoyed. Fuck, fuck this mix up. This is so cheap. Well, I tell you what, he says, just a mix up. It, it's, that, uh, it's, it's, it's designed to be, to, to, for people to get mixed up. Don't feel bad about it. You eat a mix up, move on. Don't think about it. You think you eat a mix up? Uh, you get annoyed, don't, just move on. Don't think about it. And um, so I, I learned that because before, I some of the mix-ups, like especially big mix-ups, I feel like, fuck this mix-up. And what happens? I get annoyed, I lose cool, I need more mix-ups, right? But if you come and collect it, if they mix you up, right? And then you can uh, calmly and deal with it, right? You see it coming again, you're more likely to see it coming. Instead of like, oh, you're so scared of this mix-up. So your mind is preoccupied by that one mix-up. All right? And he says, don't, let it go. Who cares? It's just one big mix-up. Who cares? Let it go. Move on. P keep, uh, keep calm. Play your game. And I think that's very important. And it's also something I learned. If I eat a mix-up, fuck it. All right? Next time, try my best. If I eat again, fuck it. Eat it. Still play your game. Keep calm. Play your game. That's the thing. Uh, <clears throat> all right, next question. Finger over your flash button and move on, got it. <laughs> Slide your finger over your flash button and move on, got it. Yeah, I'm pretty composed for that in, uh, for that in turnings, but I lost my cool once again. I in Street Fighter lost because of it. Yeah, I think a lot of times it's not that we have a huge gap. Let, let's say that New Zealand top players has a, like skill wise there's a huge gap between New Zealand and the uh, but I think in terms of uh, mentality experience and uh, exposure to different characters and knowledge and pr play style uh, we're very behind look I'm not criticizing New Zealand 
uh, I mean, I get it. Uh, none of us are pros. We go work, we study. Uh, no one plays this full time. And uh, we're so isolated from the rest of the world. Like Europe had the chance during COVID where um, they just, they got nothing else to do. They couldn't get out. So what happened? They played against each other a lot. All right. And because Europe is relatively close to each other. So uh, their connection to each other is like we to Australia, except they have a, you know, what, 10, 10 or 12 different countries they can play against each other. And some of them are close to um, also like, um, you know, Middle East and Middle East is close to Asia. So as you can see, they, they uh, in, in through this indirect approach, um, uh, so Asia was really good. Then they place uh, Middle East, East being really super good, and Europe becomes super good. And we can only play against our Australian brothers to get better. Now that we have a Yagami, I strongly suggest get fucked by Yagami. The more you get fucked by Yagami, the better you become. That's just how it is. Don't get discouraged. All right. He is no doubt top eight in the world at the moment. Like I'm talking about, like top eight in the world. No, I'm not talking about in New Zealand, Australia, all right? So, like, get fucked by him. So what? You should feel happy. All right, next up. <clears throat> to be, uh, to be frank, you didn't get hit by a mix-up. You got, okay. Do you think us New Zealand ha as a collective can level up together by consistently playing against each other? I think, I think playing against each other is better than not playing against each other. But New Zealand only have so much player at the moment, okay? By playing against each other, we'll, we'll reach a cap and we'll never be able to go up that cap because we don't have enough uh, player base to have a variety of characters, knowledge, uh, or uh, 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 a different style and general skill level, all right? We reach a, let's say, 6.5. That's what 6.5 or 7 is what most of the top players rate me, international top players. I ask them to rate me. This is where usually, let's say if I'm a 6.5 or a 7, um, if you beat me, you probably a 7.5 or 8. But that's that, right? That's, that's the top you can get. But to reach like Yagami a 9, or Sifi Black like an 8.5 or 9, how? You can't. You got to play them to be able to do that. Right? So um, that's why it's unfortunate. I'm not, again, I'm not criticizing New Zealand. I'm just saying that it, it, that's just the reality. Uh, <clears throat> eventually get better and keep going on. If you play against Australia, yeah, but I don't think uh, playing against me all the time is going to help you guys level up, but like super up to, to uh, Sefi Black's level. I don't think so. I don't think I'm that good. I'm sorry. Being absolutely humbled by world-class players in Taekwondo really did help me out. It forced me to throw my ego away and just, yeah, it, it really, playing Taekwondo, you always need to be, like after this uh, international um, uh, experience, I, I'm absolutely humbled, okay? Um, you're always, you're always student, all right? You're always a student. Like um, being the, one of the best players in your own country, you should be proud of yourself. But you should also at the same time always know that out there somewhere in the world, you know, there are so many better players out there and world-class players out there. So um, I think we need to be, hum I, I'm definitely humbled uh, by this experience. And uh, I think I'm very, very, I really appreciate this experience and very grateful. I heard a rumor Yagami beat Ativa in the first to three casuals. Yes, it is true. It, it wasn't just a first to three. It was a two first to threes. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, Ativ, I, I can tell you the difference from my own experience, the difference between Korea, Japan, and uh, 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 Pakistan. But mind you, only based on Paco's Moyo and uh, Ativ. So you know, my data is only limited by those three players, all right? Um, I just need, need to make that disclaimer. What, 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 whatever generalization I make, it's based on those three players. I don't mean uh, this is definitively how Koreans play or Atif play or, uh, I mean, sorry, Pakistan players play or, okay? So Pakistan players, Atif, he is, uh, he, I, he is very, very, very strong at attacking. His aggression is super, super on point. 
and he always capitalizes on every mistake you make, or every uh, he he pressures you so much that you lose your uh, like like you lose your um, defense. All right, you you it's very very hard to be calm against him. And if you make a mistake, you're dead. But in saying that, um, a thief is more focused on his attacking rather than his defense. So some of the things you can actually hit a thief with, and but you can't hit people like uh, if you try uh, to hit the same thing on Yagami or uh, Moyo, it's very difficult. But you try to hit the, those things on uh, a thief, he actually get hit by it. Except that obviously um, he's uh, one of the like. Or you could say he's the best player in the world. So don't do it too many times. All right, don't do it too many times because he will uh, block it or or parry it. Um, but just that uh, he focused more on his aggression, and that's his uh, game plan usually, and which is very effective because it's a first to first to three, right? So um, the Korean players are more about movement uh, and uh, about they they very calm and collected, all right. They play like uh, sort of like a Yagami, except that um, actually there's no except because I, I feel like Yagami is pretty much on top Korean level. Like maybe not on knees level, but you can definitely compare him to uh, um, like, I don't know, like uh, even Muyo. He did beat Muyo in the uh, dojo event and the game between them are quite close, right? And uh, uh, so who else? Um, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know who else plays in Korea at the moment. Um, but I, I think he's definitely on par. So they, they are plays that are very similar. Try not to, if you whiff against them, you're dead. They, they bait something out. And if, even if it's just a jet, you're dead. So you gotta be really careful against him, right? Um, the Japanese player, Paco, is, he... He is actually easier to understand. He just buttons where like he he he's very good at knowing which button to press before you do. But if you just go up and be patient and uh, he, he's beatable. But if you try to go up and then button, like try to beat him with a button, you're very unlikely to beat him. Uh, he's very, very good against certain characters and he's very good at beat your buttons. But if you don't button that much against him, you just go up and wait for your chance and use more movement, then he becomes a bit more beatable. Uh, and his defense is not as good as the Koreans, or at least not as good as Muyo. Uh, he doesn't parry a lot, but he's patient. Don't get me wrong, he's still very patient. Um, he waits for you to make mistake, or he sees you come up, he will try to do something to counter you. But he doesn't use the biggest button to counter you. Unlike Yagami, he always knows which big button to counter you with. Um, uh, Peko is more like about just stopping you with a something. It doesn't. He doesn't always optimizes uh, the counter button, but th that's that's just the difference between them. Um, yeah. Hello, Sachuwao. How you doing? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. What do you rate Sergi Master or any other comments on his style? I actually haven't had a chance to play against Sergi Master. I'm I'm very sorry, but the fact that he defeated um or he almost defeated uh Atif and he did defeat Yagami in the dojo event, even though it was very close, uh, I think that speaks for itself. I th I think he's uh, just very very strong at one point. I haven't played him. Uh, but to be able to beat uh, these top players, it's not easy. Uh, trust me. So there must be something about him. I can't comment on him just because I haven't played him. He's one the only one of the top players I never got a chance to play against. So, um, I had a rumor, um, Bobby, true, but obviously he has way more players than New Zealand generally. What was uh oh thank you very much for the uh I I sorry there's a bit of a delay. Let me just check it out. Uh Jacoda, am I I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but thank you for the follow. Uh Jacoda. Oh, there's another one. And uh oh damn, I, I'm gonna butcher your name. McLinton, is that McLinton? McLinton, thank you, McLinton, for the follow. 
is this? X Rock and such well. It was X Zok. X Zok. So can I come over and play it? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> you can if you want. All right. So um, what what else do you guys want to ask? Oh, thank you such well for the uh, tier one sub. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a bigger fan. Yes, yes. Kong Willis. Let me think of uh, something else I wanna uh, I wanna say about uh, this IES. I I think every New Zealander should I mean should strive to enter one of the IESF tournaments. Now I understand IES tournaments have a lot of uh uh, uh what's the what's the down like uh what's the what's the term for it like uh it's not very perfect right and um but I think it's not about the competition itself. What I want to say about uh, IESF is that it provides players such a great opportunity to train with other international players. Like, because IESF is always two weeks, right? Now you get two weeks to play against, to train with these best international players. And uh, I believe it will level up. Like, I feel like I have leveled up. Even though the, it, I, it could be perceivable, could be, I feel like, like I said, the things I learned is uh, basically patience, basically um, rather die with dignity that, that press a big button and that kind of stuff. And understanding your counter timing, understanding how to approach more carefully, understanding that if you're more calm and collected, you're watching for things, your opponent is more likely to make mistakes. You're less likely to make mistakes. Now these things I've learned from playing ICSF. Now whether I can implement these things properly every day, that's a different story. But playing against these international players for two weeks consistently it definitely is going to help. So that's why I suggest IESF, all right? Not for the competition uh, uh, format itself, right? But for the fact that you can get two weeks to train with them. Were there opportunity for casual matches? Yes, there were a lot of opportunities, especially when you bring your own setups. Okay, bring your own setup. You get a lot of players to come to your room and play. I've had the privilege because, um, you know, uh, New Zealand Esports gave me this uh, uh, PS5 and a monitor. They gave it to me as a prison, as a gift for me to take over. So um, I did that. Initially, I was like, oh, fuck, shall I carry this? This is so big. It's such a, it's so troublesome, right? But when I brought over there, I was like, Fuck yeah, I brought this over. I, I'm glad that I brought this over because if I didn't, I wouldn't have had the chance to invite these players to come over to my room and play against them ex um, exclusively. Well, I, me, Yagami, and later we invited more people. But in the first couple of days, it was just me and Yagami playing against uh, like Moyo, Pacos, Atif, right? Uh, Siffy Black, etc. So, um... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, like I said, I, 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 I've played more Tekken than, uh, you know, during this IESF tournament than uh, the previous six months. You had the privilege of having a free PS5. Did you mention that it was free? Yes, it was free and it was a free monitor as well. So again, I have to thank you, uh, you know, um, Jonathan for that and thank you Eastport uh, e New Zealand for that. Um, and that's just the truth. I'm very happy about my free PlayStation and uh, monitor. There's no doubt about that. Will you bring it? To yes, I'll definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll bring the setup over. What's the next for Rambo in his Tekken career? Well, I mean, it's very interesting because, um, because I'm very, very busy, right? So, but... I was so busy and I, 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 Tekken was just not a thing for me anymore at the time. Like there was no passion, uh, for, uh, like there's no passion in me, um, about Tekken. But after this IESF and after playing against these top players, it really rekindled my passion for Tekken. So whenever I have, uh, like I, I will squeeze out some time to play Tekken, play as much as possible. Like, 
you can only do so much, right? If you have a put all of your effort into playing the game, like um, you only have so much time, and you've put that so much time into it, that there's no regret. There's no regret. But if I'm not playing, and then I say, oh, you know, I don't play the game, that's not a good excuse, all right? If you're interested in that, I'll come over right now, but only if you're king. I am king, you can come over. I, I mean, you can, and we can play some offline if you want. Fuck Tekken, do you agree? I, I disagree. Whoever said that, he was a sucker, okay? Why, why, do, you, why do you say that, Zazo? You suck. Uh, were there any Eddie good players, Rimbo? Uh, I played against uh, Eddie in my group. Uh, um, he was from, oh, fuck, I'm so sorry. I, you know, people say Americans don't really know, like they, they're not very good at geography. I'm as ignorant, all right? I'm more ignorant. I don't know these, like, I don't know 90% of these countries, right? And I can't remember their countries. That's the thing. I played an Eddie player. Uh, in, in my pool to get out. Uh, he was good, he was good. But uh, I'll be honest, I think um, because of the training I had with you, and that's why I could, uh, um, I managed to uh, defeat him. And uh, I managed to, um, you know, uh, survive the group stage. If not for the training I had against you, I wouldn't have uh, survived the, uh, the, the, the group stage against this Eddie. So yeah, thank you, Axel. Yes, yes, from from Malta, Malta. Yes, that's right. Leonidas, that's correct. I don't know where Malta is. That's the thing. Where is Malta? He's very strong. It was close. The, I, I, the first game was really close. Do you think your passion will extend over to Tekken 8? That game comes out in four months and will shake up the scene quite a lot. Well, the problem with Tekken 8 for me is that I'm not judging the system at the moment. Uh, the problem is that uh, I, again, I don't know how much time I can dedicate myself to the game. Again, I, I will dedicate as much time as possible to the game. But I just don't know, like, with, with my current schedule, um, there's no way I can play the game like eight hours a day or five hours a day. If I could just play, let's say one or two hours a day, I think it would really be a miracle for me, which is something I strive to do. How do you feel about organization of the tournament and how the players were treated by ISF? Now the organization, I have to say, wasn't the best tournament I've been to, okay? Um, it's a matter of fact that the, the organization was uh, you know, it could use a lot of improvement. For example, when we got there, we didn't even know where uh, we were staying. They didn't tell us where <laughs> the hotel we were staying. When we got there, we got lucky. And because Jonathan managed it, it, it was because Jonathan managed well. It wasn't because uh, IESF managed well. And uh, for example, the I feel very bad for the uh, uh, Australian um, team. They uh, they didn't get a hotel. They, they said they were going to stay in our hotel, but then they got sent to a very, very shitty hotel. Very, very small room. The air conditioning didn't work. It was very dirty. Even the bathroom, it doesn't flush. It doesn't flush, sorry. It was very bad environment. And, uh, um, and uh, on the day of organization, they had these uh, angels, like Romanian volunteers to accompany you. Uh, good intention, don't get me wrong, good intention. But the thing is, we, we weren't uh, like children, we were adults, we knew our way. And, but they would like, for example, if the, the competition starts at 11, they would come and get us at nine o'clock. It's like, why would you need to get us like, it's only a 20 minute walk and we, we already know where the venue is. You just need to show us once, right? Um, but yeah, they, they had to guide us to the venue and then you had to wait inside the venue for like an hour without air conditioning, all right? And it was fucking st stuffy. It was so hot. You literally like a burning uh, wood. You just like sweaty, sweaty. And then um, when they call your name, they didn't even have a speaker, all right? So they call you, sometimes you miss. And, and initially they allow players to, to stay in the, uh, like the main stage, right? And because uh, then you can hear it properly. Oh, New Zealand, okay. Then later they say, oh, it's too chaotic. So they push it around out and they, no one could stay in the venue. 
that's just like why like it, it needs to be better organized it was very very disorganized and you won't believe me how disorganized everyone was kind of like taking the piss out of it and wasn't very happy about it now isf treat most players in my experience i haven't been treated badly because everything worked out for us but I can't say for like, for example, the Australian, I know that some of the Australian uh, players weren't traded super well. So unfortunately, it's a mixed bag, in my opinion. I know understand one of folk on the, um, yeah, so it's like, uh, uh, it, it's, you can give that feedback to, I did, I did, he already knows, he already knows. And uh, I believe that uh, one of the, you know, the um, eSport, uh, Christian eSports, uh, e sorry, eFootball players for Australia, he gave a, he told us, he gave a one, uh, one point for every, um, you know. I, I wasn't watching the stream. I was just watching live. And uh, even so, we were, we were kicked out. We couldn't stay and watch. So we were like, well, who cares? You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and because I was more like, okay, my, my game is finished. I, I want more casuals. I don't want to watch the stream. So I didn't know what the stream was like, but I can tell you the organization of the, it was not organized. And they always started um, uh, 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 behind the schedule. I'm not talking about five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes behind the schedule. I'm talking about one hour, two hours behind the schedule. You, you realize the room is so hot with no air conditioning. It, it's like you're literally in a sauna with hundreds of people. It was that bad. You know? Oh, by the way, AK is so nice. AK is very nice, very pleasant to be around. And I told him that uh, Zazova is a big, his biggest fan. Loved him since, uh, I've been loving him since uh, Tekken Tag 2, when the uh, throw uh, helped me to death. The event was, uh, okay, look, the event itself wasn't not cool. The event itself was cool. The opening ceremony, everything was cool. And when you actually went to play the game, it was all good. But it was just the day one, the white was shit, all right? Second day, it was a lot better. I guess, you know, at least for me, they actually started a little bit ahead of the schedule, which we were all surprised. And I, I told my angel, can you not pick me up? Like, can you not picking me up this early? Can you wait until like maybe 10 o'clock? Like, what's the point of getting there away with in such a hot temperature for, so he came late. Like, don't get me wrong, they mean, well, my, my angel, or uh, they call it angel, just means the volunteer who were there to guide us, was a very nice person. It's just that uh, the way they do things is really like, we don't need to be guided, we're not children. It's nice on day one, day two, but but I, I would appreciate if we could be provided with a choice. Some people may want them to be around. Other people may be like, you know what, that's okay. I can uh, manage myself. You know, I'm a 30 year old uh, adult. I don't need to be managed. So I, I would love to have that kind of a choice rather than, oh, you have to be guided. is to be expected. Um, well, I mean, let's just say it's a hit and miss. It's not all bad. It's, it's not all bad. There were moments that were very good and cool. All right, don't get me wrong. There were moments that were very good and cool, um, but there were a lot of rooms to improve. Um, ISF to me, it's more about a show, which they do a really good job at the, if you guys were at the uh, opening ceremony, you'd be impressed. Drones, fireworks, uh, the speaker, it was cool. It was definitely cool. It's not something you would see in New Zealand, all right? Um, probably only very occasionally in Australia, but it's not some, something you would ever see in New Zealand. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to uh, the group stage, it wasn't the best gay like organization you can have. Yeah. So uh, any any other questions? Let me think. Um, is there something else I want to say? Mm. 
Yeah, I think it just oh, uh, and also just uh, uh, exposure to uh, different uh, characters, uh, the variety of characters, and uh, variety of uh, characters and variety of style. Which character give you the most problem while well, over there? Uh, it's not very a good compare. I mean, I would say Eliza only because I don't know at all. Nobody plays Eliza. I feel like Eliza was the only character that I, I couldn't play against at all. But there were some characters. I thought initially I thought I knew the character, but then after playing against certain players and certain style, I was like, okay, I actually don't really know the matchup that well. I beat the person in New Zealand. But I don't beat the character itself. That is a uh, um, uh, <clears throat> Josie. Like Josie, uh, I thought okay, Josie is one of the female characters I'm quite confident against. I'm not very confident against most of the female characters, but I feel like a uh, Josie is kind of someone I'm I'm quite confident against. But then when I played Crush Banter, uh, he definitely crushed my soul. I think uh, I played him a uh, first uh, two first of fives, uh, so that's ten games. I only won two games. I mean, again, it was close in the sense that rounds were very close, but I couldn't close it out. He would always, he was super, super, super strong. And he even defeated uh, Yagami in the first of five against uh, his Steve. Now, it's Josie against Steve, so it's heavily to um, Steve's advantage. But, but Crush Benta managed to, Crush Benta is, um, is really on point with his movement. He always knows, like, Mike resized it, dodges everything. He was the only one who was able to actually do that against Fink. I was very, very, very surprised. In the way he attacks, he suffocates you once you get, uh, he gets a chance. So I, I thought I knew Josie. I didn't know Josie at all. So I had to review uh, how I played against Josie. Um, yeah, and uh, again, the way to play against is go up and do absolutely nothing. And then when, see, when, when they don't do nothing... And so the thing is, I haven't... Because I, I'm only starting to use the style, so I'm not always on point when it comes to punishment. What happened to them is that they see a wolf, they immediately optimally punish. All right? And uh, the feedback I got from most of the international player is that I need to improve on a couple of things. And if I did, I would be uh, perhaps at their level. What? First of all, I, uh, my um, wolf punishment isn't very good. Even if I punish, maybe one to two. They said uh, you need to optimize your real with punishment, right? Secondly, um, so my character knowledge is not the best. There are these specific things I don't know how to deal with. Like so, I um, to to very very strong players, they immediately know ah oh, you don't know how to deal with this uh, particular character or this particular uh, thing, right? And they have very very they know a lot and everything you can and they can duck they duck it everything they can they can maybe back that shot or size that they do it all right maybe not 100 percent of the time but they do it to a very high success rate let's say 80 percent of the time that's all you need that's all you need bro like if you could do 80 percent of the time you're you're all good you you fucking like a top 10 level in the world but if you only do it like 30% uh, of the time, you're not good enough. All right? So that's something I need to work on. So my character knowledge and uh, my whiff punishment and punishment. So even if I base something out, I don't punish it. What's the point? You're still like, you're not doing anything. You get chipped away. The only reason why they can beat you is because they allow you to chip them away. Because they wait, wait for that one opening, they cash it in. And all your chipping away is gone. It's all back. But if you wait, you get chip, 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 you wait for opening, you do one, two, two. Ah, who cares? Keep chipping you away. See what I'm saying? So, bro, I've been trying to tell you this for 10 years. Yeah, well, you know. It had to come from someone else, you know what I mean? Um, so that's why I, I um, and, uh, you know, and they said that, they said they remind you, they said, at the critical moment, you need to be calm and composed. It's all about your controlling your emotion. It's not about you're not a good player. If you always get nervous, uh, meaning you're not your your lack of experience and uh, in in this kind of uh, environment, you need to learn to control emotion. If you can do that, you win, or at least you play a lot better. So I'm trying to work on that. And they said they don't care about your winning or losing as long as you're satisfied with uh, whatever you're tr trying to train yourself on. 
Eventually you get there. That when you feel comfortable against your opponent, things like with Benjamin stepping heights become easier. So if they felt comfortable against you, they were probably making even fewer mistakes. That is correct. That is correct. That is uh, uh, correct. If I was Korean or German, I would listen. Bro, if you were Japanese, I would have listened to you too. If you were Yagami, I would have listened to you too. Bro, you're New Zealander, so therefore you weren't worthy of listening. Ah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, bro. <laughs> I'm kidding, bro, I'm kidding, bro. So uh, what were you discussing with Muyo on the steps? I I was asking him uh, whether uh, the top four players will get a get a um, uh, prize money. I think he said only the top three. I thought he said top two. Uh, it's actually top three. If you listen to me, you are the beaten Nikun. <laughs> Can we officially say that what I said a month ago about international players versus New Zealand was correct? Well, I mean. Well, the thing is, no one said you were wrong, but you sounded like New Zealand was trash. New Zealand wasn't trash. I think New Zealand was uh, like, like I said, it, even on the international stage, it's sort of like, like it's a 6.5 is slightly above average. It's not bad, but it's not good enough to compete at that high level. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not good enough to get into like top eight or 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 like like if it's a dojo event maybe 13 30 it, it's 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 all you can get if it's a very huge event you'd be happy if you can get into top 32. that's still not bad but it's still not like super good enough to get into that world level but but come with us you might have sound like we were trash but we weren't trash Very hard to judge because everyone plays differently and your game against the same people will play out very differently. Yeah, that's also true. Like I, again, uh, when I when I made these calls and judgments, I am only based on my level or my like the people who I am more comfortable again. Everyone's different, right? You take Kowalis or Zazob or uh, Yumi, they probably would beat people that I couldn't beat. They might lose to some people that I could find easy, but maybe it's been hard for them. Who knows? Like, I don't know, right? But I asked the people, I asked the international top players to rate on my neutral, not on my um, character or, you know, just overall, where do they think? So I get a range between six and eight. So you figure it out. I, I, I give myself a, because most people like give it a seven or, um, or a 6.5, 7, 8. You know, and or six. So I'd say let's take the lower end. I'm giving myself a six point five, which is like average. So, but that's just me. I'm sure New Zealand. Um, like for example, if Yumi went right, um, his character knowledge is definitely better than mine. Um, and um, uh, um, he plays the game. He might not be specifically be able to beat me, but that doesn't mean. Um, he might not be able to beat somebody that I couldn't beat or I find hard to beat. So mind you, I, I'm only based on my own, my own lived experience, if that makes sense. People just get defensive when talking about this kind of stuff. Well, the thing is, I think, um, I think we, it's actually good to lock, not lock down upon on us. But let's be let's be a little bit humbler than what we really are, right? Why? Because that would create more room for us to improve. If we're constantly thinking we're not good enough, what we do, we strive to be better. But I'm not saying we should. Uh, I'm again. I'm not saying that we should lock down upon ourselves because then, like, you'd be saying, "Oh, what's the point? I I so suck. I I can't improve." That's also not good. So let's let's go for with the approach like we are good for the amount of time we put it in. But we're not good enough because of the international. So, but we can definitely get there. That's the approach I I suggest that we take as a country. Yeah. <clears throat> New Zealand still won then. No, it isn't. Nah, it can be weak and known farm. Yeah. So, uh, I think. That's probably like, 
pretty much the main stuff that I've learned. Other nitty gritty stuff might just be like, never like assume that you know. Um, and just always, always test your opponent out if you know what I mean. Like be as careful as possible. The 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 the. I think now that I've learned, I think the most the safest way to test your opponent is not by doing some stuff like doing a couple of buttons to test uh, what does this person respond. The safest thing is just to, to go up and do absolutely nothing or just to go up and uh, and then during backdash if you get hit sometimes it's better just to hold back rather than constantly trying to uh, move back. Sometimes just hold it. Right, just hold it. Consistency is straight. Strive to be consistent. Yeah, I can. I can agree to that. Uh, to that as well. Be consistent, and uh, even if you just improve a little by little, there's some improvement. That's better than nothing. Don't get discouraged by ah oh, today I lost to this person in the first to five, or first to ten, or whatever. Who cares? Take it as a learning opportunity. The fact that you just be just because you're losing to that person in the first to ten, the first to, doesn't mean you're a worse player. Because it's about how many more people you can beat. It's not about that one specific person that you can beat. Let's say if you can beat the team, but you can't beat ninety nine percent of the other players. What's the point? Because you're not even gonna get to a team. But on the other hand, if you can beat ninety nine percent of people, maybe you can just you can't just beat the team. Then you're still the second best. Right, and then you just have to work on that one particular person. But if you don't have that consistency, you can just consistently beat the top player. But then you lose to these all these new players. The fact is that you'll never get there. Your 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 competition will go this you know up and down, right? And uh, you you'll never be in that top eight unless you get very lucky. You know. But do you want to depend on luck or depend on your skill? You're outside? Okay, uh, hold on, let him in.